watch. This is the life, taking a boat trip around the Isle of Wight. Some of you may have had a day trip to the seaside, or even spent a holiday by the sea in Britain or abroad. Have you ever collected pebbles? Or paddled on your holidays? We've come to the Isle of Wight especially because it has lots of different types of beaches quite near to each other. And we're going to find out about the kinds of creatures that live there and why they've chosen that particular habitat or home. Then we spotted something unusual. We checked our map and found we were near the famous place called the Needles. It looks as though they were once part of the island. Well, it was joined to the Isle of Wight once, but what happens to the cliffs is that every time the tide comes crashing in and out, the water touches weak areas and wears away part of the land. The sea can be amazingly powerful. Just look at these waves. There are usually two high tides each day around our coastline, when the sea rushes in high up the beaches, and two low tides when the sea goes out. The water slowly forms holes in the rocks, and when these fill with water, they become rock pools. And these create a very special habitat for certain plants and animals. Let's look under the water into a rock pool. Ah, what's this? Look how the crab moves. Off it goes to hide in the seaweed. And what are these? They look like plants, but they're actually living animals. They're sea anemones. Look at their tentacles swaying in the water. Have you ever seen an animal like this? It's a starfish. And here's a different starfish. Look how it walks, using tube feet. And here's a prawn. What can you see here? It's a fish called a blenny. Pretty good camouflage. Rock pools are a good habitat for these creatures, but they can be dangerous for us. So before we go looking for anything on the beach, we have to check that we won't put ourselves in danger by getting trapped by the sea if the tide comes in. So we look at a special timetable called a tide table. The high tide was at 12.49, so that means the tide is going out now. So I think it should be safe for us to go and have a look at some rock pools. Let's get back to shore then. By the time we got back to shore, the tide had already gone out quite a way. And we could see the ledge with the rock pool starting to show above the water. We met up with our young friends from Nine Acres County Primary School. They were doing a project on the seashore. We were all wondering what we might discover. We have to be really careful where we put our feet. What a lot of seaweed.
everyone set about investigating their rock pools. Have you found anything? Yeah, you just touch it, that's it. Oh, right, I told you. You get the tray out of your bag. There's a crab on it. Here's the tray. We we'll fill it with water. So we fill it with water? Some water in it. Then we can have a good look at the creatures. And they can be safe there, right? Yeah, what's that? Put it back in the water, then. I don't know. Is it, do you think it's a hermit crab? No, it's not, is it? It's a well. And we decided we would find out the size of our rock pool. Yes, 60? Yes. Right, come on, not so you record that, yes? Got that written? Yes, right. Lower. Right. Lower. Lower. Yes? I think it looks like about 20. Yes, yes. 20. We yes. also found out how deep our pool was and wrote down the results. We were hoping we might find some crabs. And we did. Oh, what kind of crab's that, do you know? Mm. No? Shore crab. Seashore crab. Can you see its pincers? There you are, it's... There's a sort of thing kind of look more black in it. Yeah. Black and brown. It's like a bluey colour as well, isn't it, there? Right, let's put that in the tray. Before it chews my finger off. There you go. <laughs> right. And let's see if we can see anything else. Can we find anything else in here? Yeah, got it. Ah, there it is. Oh. There, now what's that? An edible crab. And you said, what colour is that? It's a pink on the bottom, isn't it? Yeah. Creamy pink. Right, let's put that in there, make sure they don't bite. Yeah. So I've got a shore crab and an edible crab and hermit crabs. They're going towards each other. Right, ah, there, see? Isn't that beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. That, you can see right through it. Wait! <laughs> <laughs> then we found an even livelier creature. Oh, it's gone. Oh, no. You there see it? Is. Oh, right. Can it? Oh, it. Jumping about in my hand. Let's have a look, see what it is. Oh, look at that. <gasps> what, what is it? <laughs> Do you know what it is? It was a prawn. Isn't that lovely, eh? And here's another crab. A hermit crab. But all these creatures need their own habitat in order to survive. So we put them back into the same rock pool. Here's a story about a hermit crab and a sea anemone and their special friendship. Once, there was a hermit crab who lived in a shell in a rock pool. In his rock pool was a beautiful creature that looked like a flower. But could it really be a flower? It was catching and eating whatever food was passing. It was an animal with a flower's name, an anemone, a sea anemone. Seems I've got a neighbour now, a sea anemone. Hope we'll get along, be friends as well as neighbours. You think it's a funny friend for me. Does it think I'll do something for it? Do you think it can do anything for me? Me, with my big, strong pincers. The pincers are strong. But the rest of the hermit crab's body is very soft. Easy to bite for a fish with sharp teeth. Easy for the great beaks of the seabirds. Just then, along came a seagull, looking for a tasty crab to eat. A juicy piece of flesh to eat? A hermit crab! Ooh, safe. But what's happened here? Hello. Off he went looking for food. Whoops! I've disturbed a small shrimp. <laughs> Did you see how sea an enemy grabbed it and shoveled it into its mouth? Just then, a fish swam around the rock pool looking for food. Aha, uh -huh, a hermit crab. Well, thanks, sea an enemy. Those waving tentacles of yours stung that fish. Only a touch, 
but it warned the fish off. You're a good neighbour and a friend, sea anemone. Oh, oh, the tide's rolling in fast. Over we go, over and over and over. When the water had become calm again, the hermit crab realised he'd grown too big for his shell. So he set about searching for a new shell to protect his soft body. Hmm, that shell's no use. There's a broken part. Ooh, now this looks possible. It feels all right inside. Could be comfortable. Shall I move in? Shall I? Shan't I? Could I do better? Oh, wonderful. Even better size and shape. I'll settle for that other home, I think. So he moved house. And there in front of him he saw two sea anemones looking as if they'd like to be neighbours. It's just as well we didn't bring either of those living creatures back with us. They would have died without their proper home. And one of the things they need most is seawater. Right, what are you finding out about the seawater we've collected? It's salt. It's salt, is that right? That's what you can see there. These are the salt crystals we found after the seawater had evaporated, dried up. They were such an interesting shape to draw. Other children in the class sorted out their rock pool findings. We counted up how many creatures we had seen and made a bar chart. And what do you think's happening here? We did our bar graph on the computer. I'm so pleased we didn't bring the creatures on the graph back to the classroom. They need their own habitat, the rock pool. Have a look at some more rock pool animals. Goodbye. Mud flats to salt marshes and cliffs to beaches, why not? <laughs> <laughs>